good morning. I look a little crazy right now. Um, it is Wednesday, and that means it's the start of another vlog for the Reindeer Readathon. Turn him so you can see him and not just his butt. But I wanted to start this vlog with a package. So I got a package in from bookshop.com, bookshop.org. I can never remember what it is. I'm 99% sure I know what this is. I could be wrong. Because I did, I have ordered two things. One of them was on back order, so it could be the back order book. But I think I know what this is. And I needed it for a buddy read because my library does not have a copy of it. So I'm going to open it now. was okay great so I ordered this um because my library didn't have a physical copy of it and I wanted to sort of have to show you but this is we can only save ourselves by Alice in Wisdom not the book that I thought it was going to be this is a book that I read in a vlog two vlogs ago I think I read this um so I listened to this as an audiobook but I'm glad I own it so and it's very pretty I like the like I don't know if you can tell it's like a light pink and orange it's very like autumnal but also very spring very summer if you will um I don't know I really like this cover so I'm, I'm excited to have this but it's not what I was expecting it to be <laughs> this is the one that was back ordered though so I guess I'm glad that they sent it to me because I am you know happy to own it and I'll add that to my list but I just wanted to pop on and do my little um unboxing of that if you saw my last vlog then you already know but I'm finally finished with finals I finished yesterday so now I'm just working three days a week. Uh, I work like 10 hours a week. It's what the attorney I work for wanted me to do. So that's what I'm doing. I asked if he wanted me to come in more during break. And he said, no, basically, like he doesn't have more work for me to do. So uh, I do have work today, but I'm just chilling until then. It's like 70 degrees outside right now, which is crazy. It got like really cold a couple weeks ago. But it got warmer again, and we had like tornado warnings last weekend, so the weather's been a little a little all over the place, which I'm rolling with. I do have on like a long sleeve shirt. This is like a waffle knit that I got from Goodwill a few years ago, but this isn't like a substantial sweater, so that's just what I'm wearing. You don't care about any of that. But I am continuing to read A Deadly Education this week. My goal is to finish that because I want to film my final five-star predictions reaction video, if you will. And I think that's going to go up sometime over the week of Christmas, but I need to film it, obviously, but also I need to, like, read all the books for it. So I'm reading A Deadly Education, which is the last book on that list. And I also need to finish A Way of Kings. That's, like, the biggest thing that I'm working on right now. I have a few other things that I'm hoping to finish before the end of the year. I had my list of books that I'd like started but never completed and one of those was The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri, which I believe is behind me. So I had The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri and Quantity Theory of Insanity. I found an ebook for this somewhere so I might pick this up as an ebook. I read faster physically but I just haven't been wanting to read physically recently. I don't know what is wrong with me. I just like my, the worms in my brain say it's easier to read an ebook. So that's what I've been doing. And I also got a uh, an audiobook of this. So I'm continuing my reading this. I'm about a third of the way through. I think I mentioned this before months ago when I first started reading this, but this is a like literary fiction. This follows a family who moved to the US from Calcutta so that the, the husband and father could work at Harvard. And he's now a professor and it just follows their lives as living in the U.S. as immigrants, and primarily it follows their eldest son, Gogol, who was named after a movie Goggle. I don't know. Um, he was named after Nik Nikolai Goggle, who is a Russian, or was a Russian novelist. Um, and it just spans their lives and their miscommunications, their struggles as being half American, or having Americanized kids but being from someplace else and not feeling like they belong. And then also the kids, I assumed there was going to be more of a struggle with the kids being Bengali and not being like, I don't know, like feeling American enough. Cause I feel like that's a big trope um, and probably a big lived experience again. I don't know, but for people who, whose parents are immigrants and stuff like that. Um, but that hasn't really been addressed as much. 
the kids seem to be fairly westernized and fairly Americanized, um, but it's just following their lives. There's not too much detail on any individual thing, which I think is why it's having a hard time holding my attention, because I think the writing is really beautiful. I do like that it's sort of a character study of these characters' lives, but I just feel like there's not enough plot to hold my interest. So listening to it is much easier. Long story long again, listening to it has been much easier than trying to physically read it, just because I can just play it in the background and I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I've just been enjoying listening to it. That's all I was gonna say about that. Um, I do have a couple of more prompts to finish for the Reindeer Readathon. So again, when Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman gets here, I will be reading that for the prompt, a book that is primarily red or green on the cover, because that book is green. And then I'm reading A Deadly Education for the Five Star Predictions prompt. And there's one other book that I'm, there's one other prompt, like main prompt that I need to do. And I'm gonna use the ebook, I think it's Christmas Lights is ebook, um, but it's a bonus prompt. And I'm gonna pair that with my A Deadly Education. And then hopefully I will finish those, the books that I'm reading for those prompts this week so that I can do the last prompt also in this vlog and show you my dogs picking my other book. But this has been a 10 minute intro, which did not need to be this long. So I will hopefully have cut that down for you, but I will check in with you when I have another update. I disturb you? I'm so sorry. You're comfy. Hello! It is later the same day, and I got another package today. So this, I think, is Thunderhead, but I'm gonna open it for you so you can see. And then I can start reading this as soon as I finish... Probably when I finish A Deadly Education, because again, I think The Way of Kings is gonna take me a while. So... It is. Oh, it's different. Interesting. So this is Thunderhead. It's the second book in the Scythe series. It's a glossy cover, which I don't think I like, to be honest. Um, the other one that I have is like a soft paper cover, and I like the feel of that one more, but I will just probably put this on my shelf where the other one is as well. But yeah, now I have this. So um, that's all I wanted to update you on. I'm watching Sprints. Uh, on Sav at Riveting Reads channel. I, she just sprints every Wednesday, I think, and I usually watch them. They have ambiance in them, and I really like them. So that's what I'm doing, and I'm reading The Way of Kings. And I will let you know when I have an update, because I still don't really know that much about it, to be honest. Okay. These are my little plants that I repotted at the beginning of my first vlog for this readathon. And there's my little basil. I don't remember what's in the house one. I think it's dill, but don't quote me on that. I cannot remember what I put in there. But yes, my planties are doing well, in case you cared. Good morning, it's Friday. I wanted to come on here and let you know that I did Finished a few things yesterday. So yesterday I finished The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri and I gave it three stars. I felt okay about it. It's really like a 3.5. It was kind of slow going and I listened to it as an audiobook, which I really do think is the only way I was going to be able to get through it just because of the way that my brain has been right now. It didn't really have anything that was like keeping me attached to the story. Although I do think if you like character driven stories, and if you are in the mood for something that follows a family of immigrants and how the lives of the parents in that family who come from another country and their children who are born in that other country and then live there, how that sort of impacts family relationships in the way that people think about their self, themselves and their culture, I think you would really like it. I, those are the things that I really liked about it. It spans like 30 years, which is kind of a lot, um, but I didn't really feel that attached to the characters at the end of all that time. And so I kind of wish that I had, it's a very short book, it's less than 300 pages, which I didn't even realize, but um, I think, or maybe just over 300 pages, I might be getting it confused with another book that I've started. But that was that book. Then I did finish A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, which I'm going to be doing my five-star predictions wrap up, I guess, if you will, where I go back over the books that I 
said were my five star predictions from the beginning of this year and I give my final ratings and my reviews on those books. I'm going to be filming that video today and it will probably go up next Sunday. So not the Sunday before you're seeing this, but the Sunday after you're seeing this or after this video was posted, if that makes sense. So keep a lookout for that. If you would like to, you can subscribe to my channel because then you would see it when it pops up. But <laughs> that's <laughs> my little channel plug for this, for this video, I guess. Um, okay. And then I have started the audiobook of The Wife Upstairs. And I'm about halfway through. I listened to quite a bit of it yesterday when I was returning my textbooks. It's about this woman who becomes a dog walker in this very affluent neighborhood in Birmingham, Alabama, and she just moved there. We don't know her real name. She goes by the pseudonym Jane, but she won't say what her real name is at the beginning of the book. And you find out pretty soon on that that's not actually her name and she's using a persona. And you also find out pretty early in the book that she's got this relationship with this man whose wife drowned in a boating accident. So in my mind, it sounded a lot like Rebecca, but his name is Eddie Rochester, which I think is the male like husband's name in Jane Eyre. When I looked it up, that's what it said. So I think it is actually a Jane Eyre retelling. So I'm really curious about where it's going to go. There's also been some reveals already that I feel like I can't tell you because I don't know, I just think it would ruin it going and knowing certain things, but I'm a little, so I think this book sort of does a bait and switch because you think the mystery is going to be about like one thing, but then you find out the answer to that really quick and you realize, oh my God, there's this whole other thing going on over here with this other character that I just didn't realize was going to be the main plot of the book. I'm trying to be vague because I don't want to give anything away, but I'm enjoying it. I'm liking my read. The main character is definitely like very two-faced or the female main character, I should say, is definitely very two-faced, just like from the get-go. And we get her perspective. We get a few other perspectives in the book. The audiobook that I'm listening to has three voice actors in it, but I think we've only heard from two of them so far in the book. So I'm interested to see, I have a, I have a suspicion of who the third perspective is going to be, but I'm still interested to see who it is. Um, but our main character, Jane, where I'm at, is getting like, I don't know she's like trying to become involved with this affluent community because she's got this relationship going with Mr. Rochester and some people seem really accepting of it some people really do not seem accepting of it and she's learning more things about his like former wife who has died um that the community thought about her and stuff which is really interesting especially the because the wife that died drowned with a good friend of hers off on some like at some lake house they both drowned they drank too much and drowned that's like the, the running theory and the other like widower lives in the same community as them and he has been telling Jane all sorts of things about uh, Mr. Rochester and like his wife B, um, which is very interesting. So I'm really curious to keep reading it. I've heard not great reviews. I've only heard one person talk about it. Um, and it was actually Sav from Ribbiting Reads, so I'll leave her channel down below. I watched her reading Sprints the other day, because she was mentioning some books that she got from Book of the... I don't know, she was mentioning books that she just had on her shelf behind her, and, like, she was going through them to see, like, which ones she'd read. And she said that she'd read The Wife Upstairs, and I asked her if she liked it, and she said no. So, I'm curious. Um, but I know that she prefers, like, thrillers and horror to, like, mysteries, and this definitely feels more slow-paced and more, like, a slow burn mystery, so... I can like those depending on how they go, so I'm curious to see how I feel about it. But that being said, I'm also going to start Thunderhead today, and I'm going to try to finish The Way of Kings in this vlog. So please pray for me. I'm about 200 and something, 220 pages into The Way of Kings, and at this point, I feel like I can kind of give you a synopsis of what's happening at the beginning of the book. So we talked to a lot of different characters. And one of the main characters is Kaladin. He's the only main character I'd heard of before reading this book, I think. Um, I'm not going to lie, a lot of Brandon, Sanders, Brandon Sanderson's characters' names sound similar to me, so maybe he's been in other books. I know this is the one that's supposed to tie the Cosmere together, but I don't think he's been in other books, but maybe he has, and I just don't know. I don't know. But we're in this world um, called Roshar, and Kaladin is a slave, and he used to be a part of this army, but he deserted from the army and now he's a slave and he's one of the people called Bridgemen. And so their job is to pick up these heavy bridges and run them from plateau to plateau so that the army can cross. And it's a really dangerous job because the army is crossing to enter battle. And so a strategy to prevent the army from getting there is to kill the Bridgemen. 
from the other side's perspective, if that makes sense. So that's happening. And they're the Alethi, I believe, and they're fighting the Parshendi. I don't know anything more about that than, than that. Um, and then we follow the perspective of this girl who is, how do I even say this? She's from one of the like wealthier families, but she's trying to get an apprenticeship or a wardship with this other woman who, I can't remember her name. I can't remember any of their names right now. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but um, the gist is that in this world, women are the scholars because men aren't allowed to read. So it's like considered below men to read. So their wives like read them things. I don't really understand. But anyways, this woman is like really well read and really smart and knows all like the histories and all this stuff. And so this girl from this wealthy land is traveling across the lands to try to become the ward. Sorry, Murphy just bumped the table. It's storming out and he hates storms. So he's moving from his hiding place to hiding place. So just ignore that. <laughs> but she's trying to figure out, or she's trying to become the ward because this woman has something really expensive that has to do with the magic system. I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this, but I don't really understand what's happening, to be honest with you. So she's actually pretending to want to be this woman's ward so that she can come in and steal this instrument because her family's running out of money. That's the gist. It took me a long time to get there, but that's kind of what's happening. And then I feel like there's another perspective that I'm forgetting about, but there's a lot of like magical things in this book that are really interesting. Um, I'm still not fully tracking with it, but again, I don't read a lot of adult fantasy. That's why I like the Mistborn series so much, because I felt like each of the books were like three to 500 pages long, I think, but they also were each like very well contained and I feel like there wasn't so much going on that it got too confusing for me. Whereas this book is slightly getting to the point where it's getting a little too confusing. So I'm having to take my time with it. But I do want to finish that this week. And then I can't remember if I already said this. I want to start Thunderhead and read that. Because I'm buddy reading that with Amanda at her Pacific Northwest Washington Life. And Hugo at Scientist Reading World. And also this, the first book in the Scythe series left off on kind of a cliffhanger. So I'm curious to see where it goes from here. It's a YA dystopian series set in the like far future. Where... People have evolved and learned so much that death is no longer really an issue, so they're basically immortal. And to prevent the population from becoming overwhelming, they have this class of people called the Scythes, which are specially trained, basically assassins, and they glean people, which is what they call killing people, based on sort of whatever they want. You find out pretty quickly that they're not very well trained, but the book series follows two Scythe apprentices. Citra and Rowan who are chosen to be apprentices of the Scythe Foraday and sort of what happens to them after that happens or is it Faraday? I don't really know. But anyways, <laughs> there's so much information. This is like a 15 minute update so I apologize for that but I'm gonna get ready for the day and pick up on either Thunderhead or the Way of Kings and just see where I can get. Did you find a comfy place to sit down and snuggle up because you're scared? Yeah. I you snuggled up in a dress that fell off a hanger and pajama pants? Is that cozy for you? If you set yourself on fire, i never let you burn. I would smoke you till my lungs hurt and love till I'm the mess behind me all the dogs toys are out and I haven't cleaned them up yet but it's but it's now Monday and I wanted to update you that I finished the audiobook that I was listening to which was The Wife Upstairs the Jane Eyre retelling um I thought it was kind of predictable I'm not gonna lie so I gave it three stars um I do think it was well written and I really enjoyed the character of Jane I thought she was a very interesting main character very morally gray and I think while I don't think it fully, like, worked, 
um, to divert what the actual mystery was. I definitely, I definitely did get caught up in one of the red herrings, um, so that was really interesting, but I overall just thought it was kind of mediocre. I think perhaps if you really like Jane Eyre, maybe you would like this. Again, I haven't read Jane Eyre, so I don't know, but I don't think this is a bad book by any means, and I would be interested to read more from this author. I think it's Rachel Hawkins is her name, so I would, I would be interested to read more from her. Um, I also really want to read Jane Eyre now, but <laughs> I, I just thought it was okay. So, um, that's that. I got an audiobook in for Imposter Syndrome by Kathy Wang, which is what I'm going to read now, or listen to now, but that's, again, not for the Reindeer Readathon. It's just for me, I guess, but, um, The Wife Upstairs also I don't think counted for anything for the Reindeer Readathon, so it was just something that I read. I've also started Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman, which is the second book of the Scythe series, which I think I've already explained what that's about, so I'm not going to go into it here. I'm barely into it. I think I've read like three chapters um, and they're pretty short chapters. So it's pretty much picking up where we left off from before. I'm not as intrigued by this series as I kind of expected myself to be. I liked the first book. I gave it four stars, but I didn't really like feel as compelled by it as I think the two people that I'm buddy reading it with. Um, so you'll have to let me know how you felt about this series. I do want to finish it because I think it's good. It's just not quite as, maybe it was overhyped for me. It's not quite as like gripping as I felt like I would be by it just based on the premise. So that's that. I'm almost halfway into Way of Kings. I That's what I really want to tackle today and tomorrow. I would like to finish Way of Kings this week. I don't know if I'm going to read 600 pages between today and tomorrow. I kind of doubt that I will, but I really want to try because I would like to finish Way of Kings <laughs> in this vlog if at all possible. I just don't want to be carrying over Wave Kings in all my vlogs, but that might just be the way that it ends up going. So we'll see. But that's my plan as of right now. So I'm going to go print off my Christmas cards. I joined the Christmas card exchange for this readathon, so I have to mail a Christmas card, um, which I did it last year and I never got a Christmas card. <laughs> so I mailed a Christmas card to I think like Latvia and I, I never got a Christmas card from that. Um, I haven't gotten a Christmas card so far this year. There is time, I guess, but it's just kind of weird. <laughs> the way it all works out, I guess. Um, but yes, I need to mail that Christmas card. I did a little bit of an edit job. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all printed out, but it's just a picture of me and Matt and the dogs. Um, I'm printing out a few because I'm going to mail one to my sister and her husband in Austin, and I'm going to mail one to my parents. And then I'm probably going to print like two extras in case <laughs> um, my boyfriend's family wants one. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, that's, that's my plan for today is read Way of Kings and get these Christmas cards sorted out. It's a few hours later and I just got back from the store so I thought I would show you a few of the things that I picked up. So I went to Walmart's Photo Center to get our little Christmas cards made and this is what they look like. Very cute, I think. I edited, I, we took this picture the other day and then I edited this like background thing on Pixar, which is also what I use for my thumbnails. So it's just like a free editing app. They have a paid version, so you can't do everything on the free version, but I don't pay for it because I feel like I can get everything I need. Then I also went to Walgreens to pick up a few things. So I got a mascara and I got these like little nail press things. Um, it's like, I don't know, this like purpley, pinky, silvery stuff. So I'm probably gonna do some pretty nails for the Christmas holiday, I guess. It's not really holiday nails, but I figured it would look nice for Christmas and New Year's. And then I went to Goodwill and picked up a few books. So we went yesterday and I saw a couple books that I was interested in, but the line was super long because the line's always long in Goodwill on weekends. Um, it's just the way that it is. So I got A Girl Like That by, um, what's this author's name? It doesn't have the dust jacket. It's just the naked hardback, but I figured if I like it, I will keep it. If not, I won't. It's by Tanaz Bathina, and I think that's how it's pronounced. And I think this is about a girl in Saudi Arabia and like a boy and their relationship. And I think they get into a car crash or something. So I'm not really sure exactly what this is, but it's a YA contemporary. Came out a few years ago and I've been interested in reading it. So I'm hopeful to get to that pretty soon. I also got Shiver by Maggie Stiefvater, which is the first book in the Wolves of Mercy Falls, I think is the series name. And this is about like werewolves, I'm pretty sure. It's like a paranormal fantasy with a romance twist. It's, um, what's the word? It's a YA fantasy series. 
And the back says, the cold, Grace has spent years watching the wolves in the woods behind her house. One yellow-eyed wolf, her wolf, watches back. He feels deeply familiar to her, but she doesn't know why. The heat. Sam has lived two lives. As a wolf, he keeps his silent com the silent company of the girl he loves. And then, for a short time each year, he is human, never daring to talk to Grace until now. The shiver. For Grace and Sam, the love has always been kept at a distance, but once it's spoken, it cannot be denied. Sam must fight to stay human, and Grace must fight to keep him, even if it means taking on the scars of the past, the fragility of the present, and the impossibility of the future. I think I've read this before, but when I was, like, in junior high or high school, I don't really remember anything about it, except for I remember reading a book about, like, a werewolf slash wolf shifter boy and a human girl, and I remember really enjoying it, but I can never remember what it was called, but I think this is it. So I'm hopeful that I'm going to read that at some point and figure out if that's the book that I was thinking about or not. I also got, there's two more. I got The Witches by Roald Dahl, which is a middle grade that I'm probably going to read next spooky season about witches. I think there was a movie that just came out about this. So um, I'm excited to read this and then watch that movie. Again, probably not for a few months, but I am excited to get to it eventually. And finally, I got Cutting for Stone by Abraham Virchis. Virgis? Vir Virgis? Virgis? I don't know how his last name is pronounced. But this says, Marion and Shiva Stone are twin brothers born of a secret union between a beautiful Indian nun and a brash British surgeon. Orphaned by their mother's death and their father's disappearance, bound together by a preternatural pre connection and a shared fascination with medicine, the twins come of age as Ethiopia hovers on the brink of evolution. Of revolution, excuse me. Um, but yeah, this is a historical fiction that I've heard really good things about and I've been wanting to read. I feel like we had this book in my house when I was growing up and like my sisters might have read it or something, but I've been curious to read this as well. This has also been on my TBR for quite a while. So I'm hoping that now that I have it, I will read it. Um, and that's it. That's my little haul. So I'm going to go ahead and keep reading The Way of Kings. I haven't read anything else. I've been reading or listening to Imposter Syndrome while I was running errands. And I don't know if I ever explained what that was about. I also had to return my physical copy to the library, but I have an audiobook. And I'm just going to listen to it so that wasn't a big deal. But imposter syndrome, since I don't think I've explained what the book is about, is about a woman, Julia Lerner, who is a Russian spy in the U.S. And she started this tech company using stolen technology. And she's, like, spying on people for, um, I don't know what Russian, like, intelligence group it is. But uh, it says it over and over in its initials. But I don't think it's the KGB, even though I think that's what it's, like, modeled after, if that makes sense. So I think it's a fake one. But that's really interesting. It also follows the perspective of Alice Liu, who I believe works for um, the company that Julia Lerner started or one of the, like, companies that's underneath that umbrella. And Alice's main point, I think, is that she's going to catch Julia spying. Um, there's also some interesting background on her, but I don't want to give anything away, obviously. Um, so I'm enjoying that book. It's it's very interesting. I'm interested to see where the plot goes, because at this point, it's one of those books where it's not super clear what is going to happen. Um, like, we don't really know why the person that Julia is supposed to be gathering all this information about. Like, we, we don't know why she's been assigned to gathering information about him, if that makes sense. So yeah, um, I'm really interested in that book and I'm glad that I'm finally reading it. I think it was a 2021 release, so I'm excited that I'm getting to read some new releases. I want to read more new releases in the new year because I feel like I read a lot more, not like super backlist, but my reading tends to be in the like 2017 to 2019 range. And so I'm excited to like move, move it up and read newer releases. So that is my haul and what I've been reading. And I'm going to go ahead and try to read more of The Way of Kings because like I mentioned, I would like to complete that in this vlog. And I don't know if that's possible, but I'm going to try. This is going to be my last clip of this vlog, but I just wanted to let you know that I did not finish Way of Kings. <laughs> Obviously, I would have more of an update. But I did want to thank you for watching this vlog. If you made it to this point, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below if you've read any of these books and how you felt about them. You can subscribe to my channel if you would like to because I do post two new videos every single week. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!